We continue with our sermon series entitled The Downs and Ups of Life. Today we want to look at the book of Jonah, chapter number 2 and verse number 6. Jonah 2, verse 6 reads, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. We like to preach today from this thought, never too far down, never too far down. The prophet Jonah uh, was called of God to prophesy, to be a prophet to the northern tribe Israel of his covenant people. Second Kings chapter 14 verse 25 tells us that it was during the reign of Jeroboam the second that Jonah uh, prophesied in Israel. Uh, Jonah in the book of Jonah, though, is called now to go and preach to Nineveh. Nineveh is the capital of Assyria. The Assyrians are the uh, historic traditional enemies uh, to Israel. The uh, Ninevites, the Assyrians, are the source of much trouble. Uh, they are the source of much of the problems that Israel has to deal with in terms of its uh, external issues uh, with its enemies. The Assyrians, the Ninevites, are Gentiles. And thus, when God calls Jonah to go and preach to Nineveh, the scripture tells us in chapter number one that Jonah has an issue with this. For uh, chapter number one says that the word of the Lord came to Jonah, tells him to get up, arise, get up, go to Nineveh and to cry against it for its wickedness. Jonah instead, the Bible says, gets up. He rose up and he fled from the presence of the Lord. Now, uh, being a good prophet of the Lord, Jonah should have been well aware of Psalm 139, where the psalmist poses the question, where can you run from God and where can you get away from his presence? Well, Jonah is going to, for himself, learn this lesson. Jonah decides that he does not want the assignment. So God's purpose was for Jonah to go preach to Nineveh. Yet Jonah's protest, he turns down the assignment. Now in life, we've got to learn this lesson that there are some assignments that you cannot turn down. God, when he has purposed, that there is an assignment that he wants us to handle, to take care of. You cannot turn down that assignment. So Jonah, though, he says, I'm going to take a pass. Scripture says this, uh, that he went down to Joppa and found a ship that would be going to uh, Tarshish. He goes down into the ship. And once into the ship, he lays down when he's on the ship and he goes to sleep. The, the boat sets sail, but not too long thereafter, the Lord, the scripture says, sends a great wind. The sailors on board don't know what's going on. And so they do what they in the natural think is right to do. And they begin to cast their valuable cargo down into the sea, and yet it does not calm the sea. They eventually get around to uh, waking old Jonah up. It is interesting that when they wake him up and inquire of him, he tells them that he's a Hebrew, he's a prophet, and that he says he fears God, and yet he is being disobedient to God. Yes, now 
uh, the sailors who had previously cast their cargo into the sea. Jonah says, now if y'all want everything to be all right, just throw me overboard. And so now they cast Jonah. They took Jonah up and cast him down into the sea. Well, Jonah's got a problem now, don't he? Yes, he he, he seems to have a problem. He, even though uh, telling them to cast him overboard uh, would seem to solve the problem of those who are on board the ship, but yet Jonah still got a problem, church. What's his problem? God ain't through with him yet. Amen. So now they cast Jonah down into the sea, but the scripture is very quick to say, but the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. Amen. The fish then takes Jonah. He swallows up Jonah. And now Jonah is down in the belly of the fish. And he's there for three days and three nights. The fish then takes Jonah down to the bottom of the sea. Well, now, the question that you ask is that, well, why did it take Jonah three days and three nights down there in the belly of the fish before we get to chapter two and he decides to pray? Yes, he was in protest. He turned down his assignment, but now he's got a big problem. He is down in the depths of the sea, in the depths of the belly of the fish. He got a problem, don't you think? Well, here's what the scripture then tells us. Jonah turns to prayer. And that's a good thing to do, that whenever you find yourself down in a place of lowness that you ought to turn to prayer. Listen to what Jonah says. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Yes, you ask, why did it take him three days and three nights to start praying? Well, uh, the scripture, the text does not tell us specifically why it took Jonah so long. But if we take a minute and, and examine our own lives and our own walk with the Lord, that there may be times in our own lives when it has taken us a minute to go talk to God about those things that we are not yet ready to accept God's decision and God's purpose and God's plan that he has charted. And so we may hesitate to go talk to God knowing that we're not going to get God to change his mind or to change his purpose. This may have been what was going on with Jonah. The text don't tell us. But if we look at our own lives or let me put it this way, when I look at my own self, there may have been times in life where it took me a minute. And why did it take me a minute? Uh, because I, I wasn't ready to hear God's answer. And so I, I waited and I waited and I waited until I couldn't wait any longer. That's what I believe happened to Jonah because if we read now what happened with Jonah when he started to cry to the Lord out of the fish's belly, he says this, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of, not the fish, but out the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Yes, the, the fish was there as the immediate conduit, but it was God who had prepared the fish. And so now Jonah said, yeah, I'm in the belly of the fish, but, but y'all, I'm in hell right now. Jonah says, for thou hast cast me into the deep, into the midst of the seas, and the floods come past me about. All thy billows and thy waves pass over me. Then I said, I'm cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. 
Pause a minute, church. Here he is now at the bottom, down at the bottom of the, of the sea. Can't go no further. That fish is taking him down to, to a place where can't go no further. Amen. He now says, I will give my attention. He says, I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters come past me about. Even to the soul, the depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped upon about my head. He in a bad shape. But glory, hallelujah, church. There are times in life where we may find ourselves in a similar situation. Down in the belly of the fish, down at the bottom of the sea. Seaweed wrapped all around our head. Amen. But now God had prepared the fish so that despite all of that, the, the fish did not digest Jonah. Amen. Uh, God has so prepared the fish that the fish just held Jonah there in his belly. Glory. Hallelujah. So that in a manner of speaking, the fish was a safer place to be than was the ocean. Yeah, the sea. He told the, the, the mariners, uh, the, the sailors, throw me, cast me over into the sea. And yet God had prepared a fish that though the fish had taken him down to the bottom of the sea, yet he was safer in that fish that God prepared than he was out in the ocean. God, glory, hallelujah, church. Somebody ought to say, praise the Lord. Well, now, he says this in verse 6. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet, hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord, my God. Do you see that in your word today, church? He was down at the bottom of the sea down in the belly of the fish. He was, uh, as some might say, he was as low as you could go. He was as down as down can get. And yet, the Lord was able to bring him up out of that situation of corruption. Verse number 10 tells us that God answers Jonah's prayer. God shows his patience and answers the prayer and causes the fish to vomit Jonah up on dry land. Yes, but that sixth verse, Jonah says, Lord, you have brought my life up from corruption. Uh, Jonah almost single-handedly tried to ruin his own life. And yet God rescued him from himself. And Jonah finally starts to get some understanding, cries out to the Lord, and the Lord brings him up. Well, you're never too far down that God can't reach you. Glory, hallelujah. You're never, whatever your situation is, that you may consider it to be a case of being down, down financially, down on the job, down in relationships, whatever the condition that you're in, that you consider to be a, a down situation, notice that you are not too far down. That if you cry out and ask the Lord, Lord, help me. Lord, have mercy on me. You're never too far down that God cannot reach you. Glory, hallelujah. Cry out from wherever you are. Mankind was so far down. Man had become so alienated from God. But man was not so far down that God couldn't reach him. God sent his only begotten son. God 
sent Jesus Christ into the world that those who were down could be lifted up. Yes, it is because of the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we are never too far down that God can't reach us. And somebody ought to testify to that, that you can witness today that when you look back over your life and see where God has brought you from, there were some days that you were down and yet God lifted you up. Glory, hallelujah. Thank God today that you can never be so far down that the Lord cannot lift you up. May God bless you and may God keep you.